Welcome to the Developmental Services Ontario video. This video is going to review the history and background of Developmental Services Ontario, or DSO, to help you understand how developmental services have evolved and transformed across Ontario and how the DSO and the application process were established. Let's begin with a quick history lesson that will explain how shifting paradigms around the world over the last several centuries led to the transformation of developmental services in Ontario. In the late 18th century, people lived in small, self-sustaining rural communities, and families would care for their children as best as they could. The Industrial Revolution changed the way that people lived, shifting them from rural communities to urban centers. People spent less time at home with their families, lost contact with extended families, and all of this made it harder for families who were caring for a child with a developmental disability to care for them. In addition, at that time there was no government support for those who were poor, destitute, homeless, elderly, or people with developmental disabilities or mental health conditions who were medically classified as insane and they were often housed in overcrowded county jails alongside criminals. The eugenics movement, which was happening at the same time across Europe and North America, promoted the idea that those with mental health conditions or developmental disabilities were inferior and needed to be removed from society. The medical system also saw disability as a flaw that could be corrected in a hospital-type environment located away from mainstream society. In 1830, William Lyon Mackenzie investigated the conditions of the jails and deemed them to be unlivable for those who were insane. Nine years later, Upper Canada passed legislation to create the first provincial asylum, which opened in Orillia in 1876. By the mid-1970s, the government operated 16 institutions to care for children and adults with developmental disabilities. In the 60s, the community living movement was spreading across North America, and families and individuals with developmental disabilities began to advocate for the right to live as full citizens. In 1974, the government passed the Developmental Services Act, which gave way to the Ontario government funding more community services and looking at different living arrangements for residents. From the mid-70s to the late 80s, more community-based services and supports were introduced and by the late 80s the government committed to closing all its facilities within 25 years. The government, community-based services, and others continued to transition people from institutions to community living and in 2004 the government launched a major review of the developmental services system and announced the closure of the remaining three facilities. The review led to the Ministry publishing a consultation paper in 2006 entitled Opportunities in Action, Transforming Supports in Ontario for People Who Have a Developmental Disability, that outlined the government's intention to introduce a new form to apply for services and supports funded by the Ministry. The transformation principles of fairness and equity meant that there needed to be a new approach for how decisions regarding services and supports were made. Also, the process and documentation of personal information for making service and support decisions had to be more consistent and reliable. It was time for a new common application and process. The work of transforming developmental services in Ontario was guided by the six key principles of transformation. Citizenship, a process that is more clear and transparent that respects and reflects the uniqueness and diversity of individuals and promotes full participation in the community. Fairness and equity, consistent, reliable, and valid measures of support, which is implemented consistently across populations and regions and enables equitable decisions. Accessibility and portability, promotes person-directed planning and individual choice in tailoring supports to individual needs and choice in how and where those supports are used. Safety and security, 
respects privacy and confidentiality and promotes the best possible considerations for the individual. Accountability identifies individual outcomes and collects minimum data required for equitable individual budget decisions while respecting consent and privacy standards. Sustainability allocates funding based on assessed need and building a database that can reflect usage, forecast trends, and substantiate the funding needs of the sector. In 2006, a reference group on application packages comprised of self-advocates, families, professionals, and agencies from across Ontario endorsed a framework for a common application package for developmental services. The Supports Intensity Scale was selected as the single assessment tool that met all of the criteria established by the reference group. The Supports Intensity Scale, or SIS, is a standardized assessment tool used in almost 20 countries, including the United States and Canada. It measures the pattern and intensity of supports needed to enable a person with a developmental disability to participate in community settings. There are two versions of the SIS, one for use with children with developmental disabilities and another for use with adults. The ministry uses the adult version, the SIS-A. The reference group also recommended that a complementary tool, the Application for Developmental Services and Supports, or ADSS, be developed to gather additional information about the person. The ADSS was designed specifically for use in Ontario to complement the SISA. The SISA and the ADSS are the two components of Ontario's application package for ministry-funded developmental services and supports. A pilot test of the application package was conducted in 2007 and 2008. 2,000 individuals were assessed to better understand if the tools would collect information that is scientifically relevant and accurate for Ontario and that could be collected in a web-based data collection system, capture specific areas of support needs including exceptional medical support needs, provide a positive experience for self-advocates, families and interviewers, and work equally well for both French and English-speaking individuals. The findings from this pilot project led to the current assessment tools used today in the application package and the process used to determine support needs. The application package was launched in 2009 as a standardized tool used to determine the support needs of adults with developmental disabilities in Ontario. At the same time, in 2008, new legislation, the Services and Supports to Promote the Social Inclusion of Persons with Developmental Disabilities Act, was passed. The Act recognizes that individuals with a developmental disability can live independently with the appropriate supports and that they and their families want more choice and control over the services and supports that they receive. According to the Act, an individual with a developmental disability must have significant limitations in cognitive functioning and adaptive functioning, and those limitations, originated before the person reached 18 years of age, are likely to be lifelong in nature, and affect areas of major life activity such as personal care, language skills, learning abilities, the capacity to live independently as an adult, or any other prescribed activity. To better support community living for individuals with a developmental disability, the Act set the framework for providing better service so that individuals can apply for services and supports more easily and closer to home, more choice so that individuals and families can apply for supports that fit their needs, and fairness so that everyone will be treated fairly across Ontario. The new Act enabled the formation of application entities and thus Developmental Services Ontario DSO, was established. In July 2011, nine agencies across the province were contracted to operate the DSO in nine regions. They were directed to implement a provincial application process as outlined in the policy directive set by the Ministry. DSO was tasked with acting as a single point of access to ministry-funded services, confirming eligibility, completing the application package for ministry-funded services and supports, and conducting reassessment when people's needs change, 
Gathering information about the individual, ADSS, and their support needs, SISA, and summarizing the information in an Assessor Summary Report, or ASR. Maintaining data pertaining to applicants that can be used to inform policy and program delivery, both local and provincial, providing information about other community services, and building relationships and practices in each region based on the principles of transformation. Interim implementation of the application process took place between 2009 to March 2011. It was targeted at specific vulnerable populations like transitional aged youth who were in child welfare, had complex special needs, or were transitioning from children's residential services and adults on community wait lists in urgent need of residential support. The application process developed in this interim period is still relevant today. It includes the following steps. One, an information package about the process is provided to individuals and their caregivers. Two, interviews are conducted in two semi-structured meetings which take between two to four hours to complete. Three, one interview is conducted for the ADSS. Four, another interview is conducted for the SISA. Five, the eligible applicant is included in the interviews with one to four respondents, people who know the applicant well. Six, following the interviews, the assessor completes the assessor summary report, ASR. The ASR is a provincial document that summarizes the ADSS and SISA. It highlights key information, combines related data points into distinct, easy to read information, and provides an opportunity for the assessor to make special note of particularly significant issues or needs. It does not contain any new information, only information that has been collected through the application package and process and recorded in the ADSS and SISA. It provides an overview and helps guide application package users to more detailed information in the ADSS and SISA.